Francis Gary Powers, Francis Gary Powers, August 17, 1929, August 1, 1977 often referred to as simply Gary Powers, was an American pilot whose Central Intelligence Agency CIA U-2 spy plane was shot down while flying a reconnaissance mission in Soviet Union airspace, causing the 1960 U-2 incident. He later worked as a helicopter pilot for KNBC and died in a 1977 helicopter crash. Powers was born August 17, 1929, in Jenkins, Kentucky, the son of Oliver Winfield Powers, 1904-1970, a coal miner, and his wife Ida Melinda Powers, 1905-1991. His family eventually moved to Pound, Virginia, just across the state border. He was the second-born and only male of six children. His family lived in a mining town, and because of the hardships associated with the life in such a town, his father wanted Powers to become a doctor. He hoped his son would achieve the higher earnings of such a profession and felt the life of a doctor would involve less hardship than any job in his hometown. Graduating with a bachelor's degree from Milligan College in Tennessee in June 1950, he enlisted in the United States Air Force in October. He was commissioned as a second lieutenant in December 1952 after completing his advanced training with USAF Pilot Training Class 52H at Williams Air Force Base, Arizona. Powers was then assigned to the 468th Strategic Fighter Squadron at Turner Air Force Base, Georgia, as an F-84 Thunderjet pilot. He married Barbara Gaymore in Noonan, Georgia, on April 2, 1955. In January 1956 he was recruited by the CIA. In May 1956 he began U-2 training at Watertown Strip, Nevada. His training was complete by August 1956 and his unit, the 2nd Weather Observational Squadron, Provisional, or Detachment 10 to 10, was deployed to Encirlik Air Base, Turkey. By 1960, Powers was already a veteran of many covert aerial reconnaissance missions. Powers was discharged from the Air Force in 1956 with the rank of captain. He then joined the CIA's U 2 program at the civilian grade of GS 12. U 2 pilots flew espionage missions at altitudes of, supposedly above the reach of Soviet air defenses. The U-2 was equipped with a state-of-the-art camera designed to take high-resolution photos from the stratosphere over hostile countries, including the Soviet Union. U-2 missions systematically photographed military installations and other important sites. The primary mission of the U-2s was overflying the Soviet Union. Soviet intelligence had been aware of encroaching U-2 flights at least since 1958 if not sooner but lacked effective countermeasures until 1960. On May 1, 1960, Powers' U-2A, 56-6693, to 6693, departed from a military airbase in Peshawar, Pakistan, with support from the U.S. Air Station at Badabur, Peshawar Air Station. This was to be the first attempt to fly all the way across the Soviet Union, but it was considered worth the gamble. The planned route would take us deeper into Russia than we had ever gone, while traversing important targets never before photographed. Powers was shot down by an S-75 Divina. SA-2 guideline, surface-to-air missile over Sverdlovsk. A total of 14 Divinas were launched, one of which hit a MiG-19 jet fighter which was sent to intercept the U-2 but could not reach a high enough altitude. Its pilot, Sergei Safronov, ejected but died of his injuries. Another Soviet aircraft, a newly manufactured Su-9 on a transit flight, also attempted to intercept powers as U-2. The unarmed Su-9 was directed to ram U-2, but missed because of the large differences in speed. The Su-9 flew above Mach 1.1, while the U-2 flew at approximately Mach 0.6. As powers flew near Kosolino in the Ural region, three S-75 Divinas were launched at his U-2, with the first one hitting the aircraft. What was left of the plane began spinning, only upside down, the nose pointing upward toward the sky, the tail down toward the ground. Powers was unable to activate the plane's self-destruct mechanism before he was thrown out of the plane after releasing the canopy in his seatbelt. While descending under his parachute, Powers had time to scatter his escape map, and rid himself of part of his suicide device, a silver dollar coin suspended around his neck containing a poison-laced injection pin, though he kept the poison pin. Yet I was still hopeful of escape. He hit the ground hard, was immediately captured, and taken to Lubyanka prison in Moscow. Powers did note a second shoot after landing on the ground, some distance away and very high, a lone red and white parachute. When the U.S. government learned of Powers's disappearance over the Soviet Union, 
they issued a cover statement claiming the weather plane had strayed off course after its pilot had difficulties with his oxygen equipment. What CIA officials did not realize was that the plane crashed almost fully intact, and the Soviets recovered its equipment. Powers was interrogated extensively by the KGB for months before he made a confession and a public apology for his part in espionage. Powers tried to limit the information he shared with the KGB to that which could be determined from the remains of his plane's wreckage. He was hampered by information appearing in the Western press. A KGB major stated, There's no reason for you to withhold information. We'll find it out anyway. Your press will give it to us. However, he limited his divulging of CIA contacts to one individual, with a pseudonym of Collins. At the same time, he repeatedly stated the maximum altitude for the U-2 was, significantly lower than its actual flight ceiling. The incident set back talks between Khrushchev and Eisenhower. Powers' interrogations ended on June 30, and his solitary confinement ended on July 9. On August 17, 1960, his trial began for espionage before the Military Division of the Supreme Court of the USSR. Lt. Gen. Boris Oklevsky, Major Gen. Vorobyev, and Major General Sakharov presided. Roman Rudenko acted as prosecutor in his capacity of Procurator General of the Soviet Union. Mikhail Grinov served as Powers's defense counsel. In attendance were his parents and sister, and his wife Barbara and her mother. His father brought along his attorney Carl McAfee, while the CIA provided two additional attorneys. On August 19, 1960, Powers was convicted of espionage, a grave crime covered by Article 2 of the Soviet Union's Law on Criminality Responsibility for State Crimes. His sentence consisted of 10 years confinement, three of which were to be in a prison, with the remainder in a labor camp. The U.S. Embassy News Bulletin stated, according to Powers, as far as the government was concerned, I had acted in accordance with the instructions given men would receive my full salary while in prison. He was held in Vladimir Central Prison, about east of Moscow, in Building No. 2 from September 9, 1960 until February 8, 1962. His cellmate was Zygurd Krumench, Zygurd's Krumens, a Latvian political prisoner. Powers kept a diary and a journal while confined. Additionally, he took up carpet weaving from his cellmate to pass the time. He could send and receive a limited number of letters from his family. The prison now contains a small museum with an exhibit on Powers, who allegedly developed a good rapport with Russian prisoners there. Some pieces of the plane in Powers' uniform are on display at the Monino Air Base Museum near Moscow. On February 10, 1962, Powers was exchanged, along with U.S. student Frederick Pryor, in a well publicized spy swap at the Glenica Bridge in Berlin. The exchange was for Soviet KGB Colonel William Fisher known as Rudolf Abel, who had been caught by the FBI and tried and jailed for espionage. Powers credited his father with the swap idea. When released, Powers's total time in captivity was one year, nine months, and ten days. In 2010, CIA documents were released indicating that U.S. officials did not believe Powers's account of the incident at the time, because it was contradicted by a classified national security agency, NSA report which alleged that the U-2 had descended from before changing course and disappearing from radar. However, newly released declassified CIA documents confirm the accuracy of Powers' report. The NSA report remains classified. Powers initially received a cold reception on his return home. He was criticized for not activating his aircraft's self-destruct charge to destroy the camera, photographic film, and related classified parts. He was also criticized for not using a CIA-issued suicide pill to kill himself, a coin with shellfish toxin embedded in its grooves, revealed during CIA testimony to the Church Committee in 1975. He was debriefed extensively by the CIA, Lockheed Corporation, and the Air Force, after which a statement was issued by CIA Director John McCone that Mr. Dot Powers lived up to the terms of his employment and instructions in connection with his mission and in his obligations as an American. On March 6, 1962, he appeared before a Senate Armed Services Select Committee hearing chaired by Senator Richard Russell Jr. which included Senators Prescott Bush, Leverett Saltonstall, Robert Byrd, Margaret Chase Smith, John Stennis, Strom Thurmond, and Barry Goldwater. During the hearing, Senator Saltonstall stated, I commend you as a courageous, fine young American citizen who lived up to your instructions and who did best you could under very difficult circumstances. 
Senator Bush declared, I am satisfied he has conducted himself in exemplary fashion and in accordance with the highest traditions of service to one's country, and I congratulate him upon his conduct in captivity. Senator Goldwater sent him a handwritten note, You did a good job for your country. Powers and his wife Barbara separated in 1962 and divorced in January 1963. Powers stated that the reasons for the divorce included her infidelity and alcoholism, adding that she constantly threw tantrums and overdosed on pills shortly after his return. He started a relationship with Claudia Edwards Sue Downey, whom he had met while working briefly at CIA headquarters. Downey had a child, D. Rogers, from her previous marriage. They were married on October 26, 1963. Their son Francis Gary Powers II was born on June 5, 1965. The marriage proved to be a very happy one, and Sue worked hard to preserve her husband's legacy after his death. During a speech in March 1964, former CIA Director Alan Dulles said of Powers, he performed his duty in a very dangerous mission and he performed it well, and I think I know more about that than some of his detractors and critics know, and I am glad to say that to him tonight. Powers worked for Lockheed as a test pilot from 1962 to 1970, though the CIA paid his salary. In 1970, he wrote the book Operation Overflight with co-author Kurt Gentry. Lockheed fired him, because the book's publication had ruffled some feathers at Langley. Powers became a helicopter traffic pilot reporter for KNBC News Channel 4. Powers was piloting a helicopter for KNBC Channel 4 over West Los Angeles on August 1, 1977 when the aircraft crashed, killing him and his cameraman George Spears. They had been recording videotape following brush fires in Santa Barbara County in the KNBC helicopter and were heading back from them. His Bell 206 Jet Ranger helicopter ran out of fuel and crashed at the Sepulveda Dam Recreational Area in Encino, California, several miles short of its intended landing site at Burbank Airport. The National Transportation Safety Board report attributed the probable cause of the crash to pilot error. According to Powers' son, an aviation mechanic had repaired a faulty fuel gauge without informing Powers, who subsequently misread it. At the last moment, he noticed children playing in the area and directed the helicopter elsewhere to avoid landing on them. He might have landed safely if not for the last second deviation, which compromised his auto rotative descent. Powers was survived by his wife. Children Claudia D. and Francis Gary Powers Jr., and five sisters. He is buried in Arlington National Cemetery as an Air Force veteran. Powers received the CIA's Intelligence Star in 1965 after his return from the Soviet Union. Powers was originally scheduled to receive it in 1963 along with other pilots involved in the CIA's U 2 program, but the award was postponed for political reasons. In 1970, Powers published his first, and only, Book Review, on a work about aerial reconnaissance, unarmed and unafraid by Glenn Infield, in the monthly magazine Business and Commercial Aviation. The subject has great interest to me, he said, in submitting his review. In 1998, newly declassified information revealed that Powers' mission had been a joint USAF-CIA operation. In 2000, on the 40th anniversary of the U-2 incident, his family was presented with his posthumously awarded Prisoner of War Medal. Distinguished Flying Cross, and National Defense Service Medal. In addition, CIA Director George Tenet authorized Powers to posthumously receive the CIA's coveted Director's Medal for Extreme Fidelity and Extraordinary Courage in the Line of Duty. On June 15, 2012, Powers was posthumously awarded the Silver Star Medal for demonstrating exceptional loyalty while enduring harsh interrogation in Flubyanka Prison in Moscow for almost two years. Air Force Chief of Staff General Norton Schwartz presented the decoration to Powers' grandchildren, Trey Powers, 9, and Lindsey Berry, 29, in a Pentagon ceremony. Powers' son, Francis Gary Powers Jr., founded the Cold War Museum in 1996. Affiliated with the Smithsonian Institution, it was essentially a traveling exhibit until it found a permanent home in 2011 on a former Army communications base outside Washington, D.C. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.